Hello everyone, this is Sandhya. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created two loosely watercolored cards using the daffodils from the March Beginnings card kit. I start off by stamping my image using Versafine Clair ink on some cold press watercolor paper. The watercolor paper I'm using today is from Strathmore. It is the 140 pound. It is a heavyweight um, paper with some tooth to it. So I stamp over it a couple of times in order to get a crisp impression. I repeat that a second time for my second card panel. Once again, I just go in and stamp it a couple of times to get a real crisp black impression. I usually like to stamp my image a couple of times just to make sure I have a backup in case something goes wrong with my first card. But luckily today, um, both versions worked out. For watercoloring, I bring in some student grade watercolor. It's just a couple of shades of yellow and some greens mixed together. As for the technique, it is just simple wet on wet. I go ahead and drop a lot of water in the area where I want to color and then bring in some color and drop it into the pool of water. You will notice that I hold the brush really high up without any control. The idea is to be very loose. I do not intend to color particularly within the lines or stay in any particular uh, pattern or create gradations or anything. So it's just loose painting where I'm having a lot of fun and relaxing. I repeat the same process for the leaves. I bring in clean, clear water and apply it in the areas where the leaves and the stem are. And then I bring in some green and drop it right there. If you do end up adding too much water in a certain area, feel free to sop up the extras using a paper towel. I think now it's time for me to turn on some music so you can relax and enjoy as you watch me color. Once the first layer is completely dry, the color really fades out. So I come back in with some concentrated color this time and uh, add it to the areas that I think should have shadows. Um, the best part about this image is it's already shaded for you. So you can just go ahead and drop some concentrated ink wherever you see those shading marks. When I'm happy with the coloring, I go ahead and add some splatters. I use the same green and yellow to add splatters, plenty of splatters to the background.
Once I'm happy with the splatters and painting on my second panel, I'm ready to pick up my sentiment and complete my cards. For the first card, I picked up a sentiment from the Insightful Meadows stamp set. It's called Smiles Are Proof of Everyday Miracles. I use a piece of acetate to position my sentiment because I'm directly stamping on my um, painted panel. So the acetate kind of just helps me to make sure it is the, the sentiment has been positioned exactly the way I want it to be. So you can see here, I find it to be a little too close to the image, so I wanted to move a little bit. So then I use the acetate as a guide to move my sentiment a little bit and then test it out. Once I'm happy with the position, I move the acetate away and go ahead and stamp it out on my panel. Once again, because it is cold pressed watercolor paper and has some texture, it is important to make sure that you stamp a couple times. And this is where the Misty stamping tool is a big boon. I go ahead and trim down the extra areas around my panel. I trim it in such a way that it's just very slightly shy of the regular A2 card front. Next, I got ready with a sentiment from the Smack Kit from March 2020. It's called Growth is a Process. The sentiment I picked is Seeing You Heals Me. It is a quote by Rumi. Once again, I used a piece of acetate to position my stamp exactly where I wanted it and used it as a guide to stamp out my sentiment. Once I was happy with that, I trimmed down my panel using a Sussex die and then I used some green ribbon to tie a bow around the card. The ribbon I'm using is from Michaels. They currently have their all-time low price sale going on so I picked up a few ribbons for 99 cents each. I, I went for mostly the sheer ones which are really thin so they don't add too much bulk to the card. In any case, I decided to make the first card a little bulky, as in with a lot of dimension, foam tape and bow, and decided to keep the second one as a one layer card, so it's gonna be really flat and easy to mail. Next, I prepare an A2 card base using off-white or cream colored cardstock, and um, add my panel down using some foam tape. For the second one, I just add simple liquid adhesive to the back of my panel and put it down on cream card base again. The reason I'm using cream card base here is because it complements the white of the watercolor paper, which is not a bright white, and so it would look a little awkward if I put it on my standard bright white from Nina cardstock. This completes my cards for today, and I hope you like them. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day.